Well, it's going to be up to us, Hallie, about what happens to us during the holiday season. We've got to start right now getting anybody who's eligible, and I hope in the next day or two that's going to be essentially everybody that's been initially vaccinated, Hmm. to get them boosted. We are entering into the period of the year that last year was the roughest, the dark winter. Remember, we talked about a dark winter, and they laughed at us. Why are you pretending it's going to be so bad? It was was really bad. A lot of people died. A lot of people died. Well, we're entering that same time of year, but there are some things that are different. Now, some of it's good, some of it's bad. We have things like the Delta variant and other uh, variants that are are pretty bad. Um, So we have that, but we also have a lot of people that have been vaccinated. However, many of those people that were vaccinated were vaccinated earlier, and I know that this is inconvenient, but the efficacy of the vaccines does wane over time, not equally for all of them. I had Johnson & Johnson. That apparently waned the most. Um, And so boosters are available. Now, is it annoying to have to get a booster? Yes. Is it annoying to ever get any shot? Yes. Getting the flu shot sucks. We also generally try to do it every year. So the idea that you might have to get a shot every year isn't super new. And you know what? You can get it at the same time as your flu shot. So, look, I'm not going to say that there is nothing about this that is annoying. But if you want to be able to have a normal Thanksgiving, a normal Christmas, a normal Hanukkah, a normal New Year's, a normal everything, you could potentially do that. But you might still have to be a little bit responsible. Now, he suggests in the the video uh, further on that you might still want to consider if you have people traveling in wearing masks. Now, I think that realistically for a lot of people in a thing that's about eating, that is going to have some holes in it. Um, But you can definitely get boosted. You can definitely at least get boosted. And if I can try to encourage you a little bit to do that, uh, let it be this. If you were previously vaccinated, uh, you are likely to get less sick when you get sick. But long COVID is still a very serious thing and we are still finding out more over time. At least 50% of people who survive COVID-19 experience a variety of physical and psychological health issues for six months or more after their initial recovery, according to research on the long-term effects of the disease. So they found, uh, looking at 250,000 adults and children, more than half experienced a decline in general well-being, resulting in weight loss, fatigue, fever, or pain. Now, I want to give you a more specific idea of what this manifests as. About 20% had decreased mobility, 25% had trouble thinking or concentrating called brain fog, 30% develop an anxiety disorder, 25% have breathing problems, 20% have hair loss or skin rashes. There are also cardiovascular issues, which are very common, chest pain, palpitations, things like that, stomach and gastrointestinal uh, uh, problems as well. So these are very common. They can last for a very long time. And you are, especially if you're vaccinated, look, even if you're unvaccinated, Lots of people survive it, but what does survival look like? Do you want these sorts of problems? Do you want brain fog? Do you want issues with mobility? Do you want chronic chest problems? These are bad things, okay? Um, Anyway, uh, we we do have some good news to balance this out, though. First of all, that boosters are widely, freely available. Um, I got boosted for J&J. I got Pfizer a few weeks back. My wife is actually getting a booster later on today, so... I know that we're media figures, we're not supposed to encourage you for medical stuff, but that's never stopped them with ivermectin and shit, so whatever. Anyway, there is other good news coming, so let's try to end the show on a bit of a good note, and that is that we'd previously talked about Pfizer's COVID-19 pill. So they say it reduced the risk of COVID hospitalization or death by 89% when administered within three days of the onset of symptoms, which is very similar to the protection um, uh, that you might get from vaccination. In this case, though, look, lots of people are just not going to get vaccinated. We understand that at this point. Maybe they'll use this. I have not yet seen much of an indication about where the right is going to come down on this. I don't rule out the possibility that they will be against this pill, too, uh, purely because it's a very it's strong protection against COVID, apparently. And again, all of this is coming from Pfizer, so we'll have to see, but the CDC seems to agree. Anyway, um... There's also a bit of a, more developments about this pill. So one is that Pfizer is going to be uh, allowing manufacturers around the globe uh, to make this pill. So they say it's going to supply countries in 53% of the world's population will be allowed to uh, manufacture this pill. 
They're going to be foregoing royalties in low-income countries and waive them in others as long as uh, COVID-19 remains an international public health emergency. Now, there are a lot of potential wiggly points on that. Who exactly is declaring that it's an emergency that they would agree with? How long are they going to do this after they get the positive press? All of that is true, but this is sort of what we were hoping for uh, for the vaccine. Maybe this can save a lot of lives in uh, place of that. Also, the Biden administration has ordered 10 million courses of the COVID treatment pill. Now, I understand it still hasn't even been authorized. They're waiting for that. Uh, but they believe that it will be and that the pills will start to arrive near the end of the year and through till next year, which is particularly in the absence of a unified willingness to get vaccinated and stay vaccinated about as good as we could hope for. Maybe some of the people who will go to the hospital hospitalized for COVID or whatever, maybe their lives can be saved. Maybe some who get exposed will take this and never end up in the hospital. But we also have some people who have been on their deathbed denying that COVID is real. So it is likely that there will still be needless suffering and death, even in the wake of this. But we can try to make it as little as possible. Maybe we can at least do that.